Cybertruck has captured the imagination of so many people, including me, and there are so many great videos featuring the design and the engineering and all those things. I'm going to link to those videos in the description, but I'm going to cover something different today. I'm going to cover two things. One is modeling and the other one is memes, and I'm talking about financial modeling. So the reason why I decided to do a video solely on Cybertruck is because it's the brand and the design that I identify most strongly with of all the Tesla products. And I think a lot of people feel that way. I've only heard of people hating the model at first and then ending up loving it, but never the other way around. So if you're here for the memes, those have been a big hit and I love them. I was cracking up preparing for this video. So I'm just going to react live at the end of this video as I look them up and that way they'll be fresh, but I'll leave a timestamp in the comments as to when that occurs. A lot of you have been asking for more modeling examples. So this is going to be super simple, but also fun. And you can watch this on your phone and follow along easily. I'm going to give you a way to model out Tesla's business with just a few line items. And we're going to cover some super simple concepts that will be valuable if you're looking at any company, not just Tesla. So I'm just going to add Visa and Apple so that we can look at two companies for comparison and, and we don't just spend all of our time on Tesla. But you'll see what I mean in a second. So we're also going to estimate the value that Cybertruck sales could add to Tesla's stock price. And finally, if you're interested in my Q4 Tesla preview, which will be coming out next week, and I'm going to go through everything, number, sentiment, the trading history on the various quarters in the past, my expected reaction, all of that stuff, then make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Okay. Thank you as always. And here we go. So here's the financial model that I put together and let's just take a look at Visa really quickly. So here's what I do. Uh, I've listed out their revenues from 2018 and 2019. Their fiscal year has already ended. So they've closed the books on 2019. So their revenue and then their operating income. And one quick note on operating income, you'll see this if you go to their investor relations section, uh, but they do adjust for certain items. So you can see here that they have a gap and a non-gap column. And you can see that the operating income numbers are a little bit different. And so basically they have a litigation provision where they back out expenses in the non-gap column. And I'm just looking quickly to see if there are any other real changes. And that's it. So basically, this tells me that they had a one time litigation expense that they're not going to count as part of their ongoing normal earnings. And this is commonplace for businesses. You want to make sure that they don't get into the habit of always excluding recurring expenses. But if they do have one time non recurring expenses, then backing those things out can help you to determine the underlying profitability of the business. So for now, let's just go with Visa's non gap operating income of 15.3 billion. And by the way, the sales were 22.9 billion. So I plugged that in right here. And you can see that their operating margin is 66.9%. In 2018, that number was 66.7%. So here's the thing that I want to talk about, and it's called incremental margin. So the concept is super simple, but it's so powerful that you can literally just take out like a napkin or a sheet of paper or a calculator and understand how a company is progressing in its journey to profitability without really doing a whole lot of thinking and a whole lot of work. You just need to understand this simple concept and I'm going to apply it to Tesla in a second. So here's the deal. What is this formula doing? Let's take a look. So basically what it's doing is it's saying how much incremental operating income right here on this line did I get given the incremental amount of sales? So it's the change in operating income over the change in sales. And if you're following along at home on a piece of paper, you can basically think of it as, let's say my sales went from zero to 100 and my operating income went from zero to 10. Then the delta in my operating income is 10, the delta in my revenue is 100, and my incremental margin is 10%. Also, I said we'd look at Apple, and I wanted to use Apple as an example, but I actually didn't know this. Uh, their sales and operating income were actually down in 2019 versus 2018. You can see that they did 260 billion in sales in 2019 versus 265 
and they also had operating income of 64 billion versus almost 71 billion in 2018. So this was sort of a bad example. I didn't want to use it, but that's sort of how you look at incremental margin. The important thing to keep in mind is you want to make sure you're looking at a quote unquote clean number, i.e. one that is adjusted for one time expenses and the company should call that out for you just like Visa did. So let's look at Tesla and I've done the same thing with Tesla. I've just pulled these numbers from their Q3 release and you'll notice here that these are for the nine months ended 2018 and 2019, not the full year because obviously we don't have those numbers yet. But just so you can follow along from home, let's just take a look at 2018 so I can show you where I'm getting this. 14.2 billion of revenue and 638 million of EBITDA. So let's take a look at Tesla and you can see right here, this is total revenues of 14.2 billion. And then you have to scroll down a little bit. This is going to be really hard to see. Um, but if you go to their, uh, if you go to their website, their investor relations website, you'll be able to see this as well. And then I'm just pulling non gap EBITDA, which was 638 million in 2018 and 1.219 billion in 2019. So you can see that these numbers are plugged in here. A couple things. So number one, their EBITDA margin in 18 was four and a half percent. And you can see that that margin increased to 7.1%. Their incremental margin looks a lot different than Visa's. Number one, it's obviously lower. But the more important thing is that as Tesla's sales are increasing, their margins are increasing too. For each and every dollar of sales increase in 2019 that Tesla's got so far, they've earned an incremental 19.6% on those dollars. So this is important because it tells you where the margins could be going. And so you can see the margin uplift here. And again, I use the same formula that I used with Visa. The point is, is that when you're modeling companies that have a lot of future growth embedded into the stock price, you want to have a sense for, hey, what is the incremental margin? What are my fixed expenses? What are my incremental expenses? And I'm probably even getting into too much detail with that. But the point is, is for every dollar of sales increase, how much margin am I getting to the bottom line? And if this number is positive and it's higher than your current margins, this is a positive thing. And by the way, you can see that Visa is kind of already maxed out. It looks like they're operating around that 66, 67, maybe 68 percent margin. And they're not growing so much. But Tesla is growing pretty significantly. So here's how you can take a pen and paper and just sort of pencil out for yourself using your own assumptions. Hey, what could Tesla stock be worth? You don't need a model to do this, but let's just do it since we have it set up here. So I'm assuming two and a half million total vehicles. I'm assuming an average sales price of 45,000 and that gives me total sales in the automotive segment of 112 billion. Uh, I assumed that automotive sales were 82% of the total sales. So I just kind of grossed up the pro forma sales number by that amount to account for the other business lines that that may end up being a bad assumption, but but that's what I did. Then what I did is I applied the same incremental margin that Tesla experienced in the first nine months of 2019 to our pro forma model. So let me just show you how this works because it's I don't know, it sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. So here's what I did. So I took again, the difference between the two sales of 137 billion and 17. And let's just do it out over here. So 37 minus 17 is 110 billion, right? Okay. And then I said, the incremental margin is going to be 19.6, right? So that means on the 110 billion, we should get 0.196 is 21 and a half. And then we started with this 1.2 billion already. Remember, this is incremental. So if I add the 1.2 billion to the 21 and a half, I get 22 billion versus our 24. And oh, and the reason is because I did my initial math wrong. No, this wasn't 110 billion. This is 120 billion. Okay, so now you can see we got pretty close and hopefully you can see uh, how we did that. So if, 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 and it's a big if, Tesla is able to hit 18% EBITDA margins. And again, let's just go back and think for a second. So Elon's target is 30% gross margins. And I've talked about in my other videos, I think spending somewhere in the 8 to 15% range for SG&A and R&D 
basically sales, general and administrative expenses, plus research and development is pretty reasonable for a mature company. So if we just kind of smell test this, we're talking about 30% auto gross margins, and then we're taking 12% off to get to 18. I mean, that doesn't seem totally nuts. So just sanity checking our 18% margin leads me to believe that it, it's not totally crazy. Uh, so this is our EBITDA, 24 billion. I put an eight times multiple on it. Um, I don't know if that's right or not, honestly, but it's more expensive than the auto OEMs and less expensive than companies like Google and Apple. And I actually use 10 times in one of my other videos, but let's just discount it a little bit. The company has approximately 8 billion of current net debt, and I've assumed that they add 33 billion of debt to their balance sheet, which let me tell you why I do that. So the Gigafactory 3 in Shanghai, I'm estimating will cost two and a half billion dollars. How do I get there? They say that under the terms of the arrangement, we are required to spend 14.08 billion of RMB. And so if you take 14 billion times 0.14, I get 1.96 billion USD. And then I'm just putting in a buffer there of an extra 500 million and assuming that that's what they spent. And the production is 150,000 vehicles, which tells me that the gigafactory cost per car are 16,000. So I said above that we are assuming two and a half million vehicles. And right now we're run rating at around two and a half million vehicles. So to get that incremental two million vehicles, I'm taking on 33 billion of additional debt, which is just 16,000 per car times two million new cars. And let's also sanity check this number, like 33 billion sounds like a lot, right? But we're going to be earning 24 billion of EBITDA under our scenario. And so from a leverage standpoint, this really isn't that crazy. You're levered at 1.7 times and I'm just adding up all of the debt and putting it over EBITDA and the multiple on that is 1.7 times, which is reasonable. So let's leave that for a second and let me just show you how I'm thinking about the Cybertruck. So I took the average of the three price points, which is 40K, 50K, and 70K, and just ended up in an average sales price of 53,000. And I'm using 100,000 to 250,000 as my unit count. And let me just sort of show you why. So Ford sells about a million F-150s every year. I don't know what the reasonable market share for Cybertruck would be. Cybertruck, I feel like might appeal to a wider audience, but we have to give respect to Ford and the F-150. People love that car, and it's one of the most, if not the most popular trucks. The red line represents the Google trend chart for Ford F-150, which has been steady over the last year. And actually, let me back this up to five years. Yeah, so the F-150 has been steady over the past five years. You can see that the Cybertruck spiked briefly and then has come back down to a lower level. Obviously, part of this can be attributed to the fact that Cybertruck won't come out for a couple of years. So the interest is clearly there. But again, let's just give some respect to Ford and let's not assume that the Cybertruck totally cannibalizes all of Ford's business. So maybe 100,000 units or vehicles, maybe 250,000. At the 53,000 ASP we discussed, that implies between 5.3 and 13 billion of revenue. And I'm going to assume that these come through at a 30% gross margin, which is sort of Elon's, again, Elon's range. These vehicles should be higher margin than the other cars because of the way that they're constructed. And there's some great stuff online and on YouTube about Sandy Monroe and his statements and comments about the Cybertruck and its potential cost savings. I don't want to get too bogged down in those details because the math works anyway, but let's just assume that gross margin is 30%. So if we take the same eight times that gross margin, I'm not assuming any incremental SG&A. I'm not assuming any incremental advertising. This is sort of an ad for Cybertruck. So they're getting that for free. And I'm just assuming that 100% of the gross margin dollars flow right down to EBITDA. We put an eight times multiple on that. And conservatively, I think Cybertruck could be worth 50 to $139 per share. So that's how I get there. 
Now let's go back to where we left off with our pro forma operating model, assuming two and a half million vehicles sold. So we established that with two and a half million vehicles sold, they could expect potentially EBITDA in the $25 billion range. I applied an eight multiple to that and subtracted out the debt, which is which both represents their current debt as well as new debt from a gigafactory or many gigafactories. And then let's talk about shares. So we basically have 157 billion of equity value, which is just the enterprise value minus any debt that the company owes. So the current shares outstanding are 184 million. We know from earlier videos that Elon has 20 million shares worth of options that he'll get if he hits financial and operational targets. And then I'm also assuming that the company's going to have another 25 million shares outstanding for a total of 229. There will be some dilution creep in the Tesla share count because they give stock options to employees and things like that. Or maybe they'll do another capital raise. And by the way, if they did a raise at if they sold 25 million shares at $500 a share, that would be a $12.5 billion raise. So they, they, that's pretty big. They probably won't do that. But anyway, I'm just keeping the share count at 229 million because I feel that it's conservative. And you can see that when you divide these two numbers out, you get to 687 per share. Now, a couple things about this before you stop me and say, hey, this is a lot less than 800. Well, this is just the auto business, and I'm going to exclude any additional cash that they get from a raise. I'm going to type in 800 for the robo taxi business, which is what I personally think it's worth, and I get to $1,400 a share. Now, Elon's target is over $650 billion in market cap. This would get you really only half of the way there, or just over half of the way there, to $340 billion. So $1,487 per share is what you get under those assumptions. Let's see what happens if they actually sell 5 million vehicles, which I believe is Elon's target for five years from now. He wants to, he wants to 10x vehicle production, and they're at half a million vehicles today. So that gives you 5 million vehicles. There we go. What we also have to do is add more debt because we've got more vehicles. So our incremental vehicles before were two. Now they're going to be four and a half because we just added two and a half million additional vehicles. The new debt is 75 billion. And that still gives us a conservative leverage number of 1.6. It gives us a $413 billion enterprise value, which is simply EBITDA times whatever you think the appropriate multiple is. And that gives us a value pre robo taxi of $1,400 per share. If I add in my robo taxi, I get $2,200 per share, $2,244 to be exact. And that implies a market cap based on 229 million shares of 514 billion, which is still below Elon's target. So hopefully that makes sense. But please keep in mind, this is just my own personal work, and it doesn't mean that the stock is going here. This is just a way to pencil out ideas and keep track of them in a little spreadsheet with colors and things like that so that we can talk about these concepts. Please don't mistake this for a price forecast or a formal anything. It's just for conversational purposes. Okay, if you skipped right to this section, welcome. And if you just sat through the modeling presentation, you must be tired. So I'm going to get right into this. Uh, first of all, you have to respect a corporation or a company that can meme. And here's Tesla's official account. This is their video post of the Cybertruck. And they say, I'm going to tell my kids this is the first pickup. So they're, they're a little bit out of date. But I think when they posted it yeah, in November of uh, 2019, they were okay. And then here is a video called Chase the Chase Tesla Cybertruck. So and I don't think you can hear this, so I'm just going to post the link, but I lo this isn't even really a meme. I just love this guy following the Cybertruck. And as long as we are checking out the Cybertruck in action, we've got to zoom over to Nobu in Malibu and watch Elon with a group. <laughs> Let's just watch him. With a car full of a nice looking group leave the restaurant and here he goes i just love how he takes out that that little sign or whatever it is anyway that that's on loop or on repeat okay <clears throat> here we go cyber truck memes 
Should we click on the video? I think we should do Motor Trend. It's an official list. What you imagine your project car to look like, what it actually looks like, that is so true. I think this is what everybody thought the truck would look like. Am I right, guys? It was supposed to break like that. Uh, it's good. That moment when you realized you forgot to call safe light. I wish I got that. Somebody explain that to me. I don't understand. Ah, okay, now I get it. <laughs> safe light auto glass. Yeah, I'd say that's accurate. Uh, skip over that one. This is what happens when a DeLorean marries a, a ridge line. That is 100% true. Elon Musk unveils Tesla's cyber school. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I waited for that one. That's a good one. Uh, this is classic, but it's overplayed. Your crush, her ex, her first love, her dad, you. I mean, that's not funny because it's just true. Blade Runner, November 2019. Reality, November 2019. Yep. Another one that's true. I've actually seen this picture before, but it's brilliant. I love that picture. I was actually considering making this the thumbnail for the uh, for the video. And this isn't even a meme. This is just great. A cyber truck made out of Legos, and they have the um, the ATVs in the back. How do you feel about the logo? By the way, I'm not sure how I feel about the cyber truck logo. It's cool, but it seems like it might get dated at some point, and it's and it's hard to read. <laughs> This is a classic one, but I think this has been too overplayed recently. That's that's an easy layup. Okay, that's all we have for Motor Trend. I might cut the video here unless I find something great. Uh, here we go. Funniest put down memes from Cybertruck haters so far. I don't understand what the fuss is about Tesla Cybertruck. <laughs> it looks to me, hey, they're not wrong, but it's a good looking doorstop. What is this? Wrong answers only. Mommy, where do Tesla Cybertruck come from? Well, when a Pontiac Aztec and a Hammerhead Eagle One Thrust really love each other. All right. That's that's a burn. The Denny's truck. <laughs> that's great because it's got nothing to do with Tesla, obviously, which is why it's a meme. That is great. I like that one. Uh, that's all we have. All right, should we do one more? Should we do one more? Oh, we've already seen that. How about this? The Cybertruck meme, memes keep coming, and the Drake meme is a gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> That's good. <clears throat> That's good. That gets a little chuckle. That's just true. That's just true. This is the best meme that this guy's seen about the Cybertruck. Come on. You've seen better memes. We've seen that one. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate you sticking with me this long. It's been a, a pretty lengthy video. So have a great time and I'll see you soon. Thanks again. Bye.